I'm out and welcome to 60 Diesel. So we are working on this evening. It is Thursday, I think, at about half past seven. So I've just bought this 312 um, with a ridiculously long body on it. 2.95 cylinder, one of the best engines they ever made. And top got a little arm crane. But sadly, um, it's out of test. And um, it's got some... I wouldn't say a little bit rusty, not seriously rusty. So quietly, as we've got loads of work on, and one of my lovely fitters has injured himself, he's in hospital, which is making things a bit of a nightmare. Not that that's his fault. Um, so I thought, we've got a day on the transit, and I could do with this on the road and usable fairly quickly. I'd, um, I'd pull a couple of sort of late ones, and um, I'd do some wheel arch replacing. I've got to do the wheel arches, the seals, and the doors, really, to make it a nice truck. Um, the wings are horrible. I've got some second-hand ones, original Mercedes ones, which we've dug out, which are good. And I've got some wheel arch repair sections. So what I thought I'd do, I've started strip. I've stripped the driver side already. I've got the passenger side yet to strip. Um, so I'll show you how the fronts come off of them. It's dead easy. Um, I'll show you how to take the wings off and how I go about replacing the wheel arches to make a nice job of it. They do design these panels as a cover, but I'm not a great fan of just burying rot behind a piece of tin so the best bet is to cut it out do it properly and then at the end of the day you've got a good job and um and hopefully you've sealed up and painted properly it'll last a good few more years i'll um i'm gonna swing the camera around and i'll show you what we're doing and then i'll stick it on a bit of a time lapse while i drill a load of spot welds cut a load of stuff off and peel this wheel arch off before i go home for the night so as you can see i mean this is a 1999 i think t reg so currently i've pulled the front uh, I suppose you'd call it front panel out with the headlights, dead simple. Um, bumper off first, panel out. I mean, so bumpers on these early sprinters and, and the later gen are dead simple. Bolt there, bolt there. Some of them do have some fixings down the side, but most of them slide straight off the front. And we say, well, we're here. We'll clean this up. Um, and then, obviously, as you can see, I've, um, I've pulled the wing and the door off. We're actually reasonably solid in here. We could just do with a bit of a degunge. And some sorting out, but not looking terribly special there. So that there is the repair panel. And if I quickly slot it over the top, we'll see basically what we're going for. Um, people do put them on straight over and just weld them in. I can't see why you would, because all you're going to do is see that load of mankiness on the inside. So what I'm going to do is, as you can see, we just roughly marked it out. We'll cut it lower than that. And see all the spot welds down where the where it joins and um, we'll drill all of those down to the bottom and there's a fairly manky looking bit of seal repair there so i'll cut back into here to get rid of that um and then peel this wheel arch off and then basically I'll drill that to show you how to remove i mean these wings are uh, dead simple um they come off on about five screws um pull, pull the wing out pull the door out of the way um, and we'll do exactly the same on this side. As you can see, um, the body filler gremlins have been here. So we'll get rid of this wing. As I say, I've got two good ones. And, um, and we'll do exactly the same here. We'll have this, this wheel arch out and replace it. And while we're at it, um, I don't like the door bottoms. I think that one might be salvageable. I don't know. It looks pretty horrible to me. But the other one, which is proper monkey, is about two inches thick at the bottom so we're assuming that's a load of body filler um, but apart from that it's actually quite a square little truck it is ridiculously long um, but it's quite nice it's only done i think it's showing 160 let's go have a look on the clock um, we'll clean all the black paint off the sides and beds because we're going to hang on to it i've got a use for one and she is showing 100 and 60,000 miles, um, which I would say is genuine. We've got some random seatness going on because we appear to have a new shape back and an old shape base. But luckily enough, I happen to have that floating around. So we'll fit the base onto this and also chuck that seat in while we're at it and see if we can make it a nice square on 310. And it seems to be desperately in need of some wheel arches. And um, I'm going to do something with that floor because that's horrible as well but anyway that's later let's get on and do this now i'll um i'll get spot well drilling and i will stick you on time lapse in the corner. <laughs> So as you can see now, what we've actually done is 
basically, obviously this is the old wheel arch here. And you spot welded all the way through here, so it's actually, I find, easier to grind or to flap disc at this. Um, you'll never drill the spot welds out. I mean, they don't exist. Um, save taking too much of the original in the wing off, which I reckon is salvageable. Um, so we'll clean all this up, get this strip off. As you can see, we've got the normal, I think there's two plates there and some gack. Um, and then we'll clean this sill out as well, and then he can, he can go if needs be. I'll make my mind up on that in a minute. Um, this plate will come up to here, so I'm going to trim this out, clean this up, and we'll rust treat it. Um, and then basically we'll get into fitting the new one, which can be plugged and welded, spot welded all the way around here. Um, we've got a big three-phase spot welder, so we'll get this all cut in and, um, and joggled into here. Um, so we've got a nice flush and we've got a decent surface to weld on because obviously we've got a wing pick up just there. And um, I have a feeling that I don't like this uh, this door sill. So he might get, might go as well because there's no point really doing half a job. Anyway, I'm going to tidy this up quickly. I'll, um, I'll show you a bit of grinding this off and then probably go home for the night and we'll get back on with this um, tomorrow evening once things have calmed down in the workshops a bit. So we've um, cleaned this up, uh, as you can see, pressed as we need to for a minute. And on a bit of further investigation and a bit of batty bashage, it would appear that this piece here is nothing but body filler and black gouge. Gouge. So they do actually do a complete cab repair section. It goes from here, <laughs> encompasses that whole sill and up into that front wheel arch. And I reckon that's probably our best way forward. There's no point even trying to repair that. It's easier to drill the spot welds all the way through here. And I think the section comes up to here somewhere. Um, so I'll literally get rid of it down here on the join line um, and put a whole new sill in. We've got inner sills in stock as well. We tend to carry a fair few panels, but I have a feeling I haven't got any of the completes. So I'm gonna go and order two completes now, which might slow me down for a bit, but I can still cut all this out. Um, and I reckon I'm gonna end up doing the same on the other side. But at the end of the day, do it right. Do it well, do it once, do it right. Um, seal it up, and I say she should um, should stay rot free for a few more years. Right, that's me done for the night. I'm going to sling a door on it, throw it out in the yard, and lock it up. Right, it is oh God, Tuesday evening. Um, I've been auto trail campering all day, and we have just put a video up on that. But this is the sprinter repair one. So you'll have to excuse the state of me. I think as I've got into my 40s, I'll start looking more like I've been blown up every day. Um, but I'm back. Um, I'm going to do a bit in the evening and try and get this thing finished. Um, this is a Sprinter 310. And to be honest, it's getting rustier and rustier and rustier. But nothing is unfixable. And the main structure's good. Um, so I started the other night. This will be added on to that. So it might not quite make sense, but it will if you keep watching it. Um, and um, I'll show you the bits I'm peeling off this evening. And then we're just going to keep going, adding chunks. So give you a good idea if you need to do this to one of these. Um, I did put a post up earlier on the LT Facebook page if you're from there. Because basically these trucks are pretty much the same. Different fronts, different engines. But the main structure and the repair panels that we're fitting fit Mark 1 and Mark 2 sprinters. Um, and also the sort of facelift. So from say like 1996, I think it's the earliest you can get for a TN. T1 and TN1, um, and then up to basically 06, which I think is the last of the facelifted clear red light ones. Um, and same with the LTs. I mean, the LTs have the same foot wells, the same door flitches. The door tops are different, but the replacement sections for the bottom of the doors are the same. Um, so I'm going to be fitting some of those this week because this thing needs two of them. Um, I'm going to spin this camera around and I'll show you what I'm up to this evening. It's only going to be a short add on again, and then I'll just keep putting chunks in all week. So basically, I think in the last one, I um, drilled all these Murray spot welds, hiked the front wing off, and then we got sort of down to here. Now, at first visual, this inner here looked, looked quite solid. Um, that was a lie. It's gone at the front corner. Um, and I finished drilling the rest of the spot welds out for the outer seal, which obviously normally would be sat here somewhere. 
I didn't have to worry about cutting the bottom of it off because um, as you can see, the only thing holding it on there, this is the lower half of the inner seal. Um, there's a load of bits of stuck in tin and some top quality body filler. So that's rubbish, I'll get rid of that. Um, now we have a selection of the panels that they do do for these. This is a replacement inner seal. It does work with chassis cabs. I think it's primarily designed um, for the actual vans themselves because once you've clipped it on here, you can probably just wedge it there. You can see he's not quite perfect at the back there. But we can clean that up. I'll have to make the back cab corner. That's not too much of a worry. And while sort of trimming the panel off, um, we found that the fellow merchants had been here. I mean, uh, where's the bit I cut? I mean, really. You could have tried bashing it out a bit better than that, couldn't you? I reckon that's about an inch and a half thick. Anyway, I'll sort that as well. So what I'm going to aim to do this evening before I have to disappear off is get this, um, this in a sort of, it's a joiner flitch, I suppose. This is the back of the footwell. And then this section, obviously, there's a, a rib here that is spot welded to. If I grab this one panel you can see there exactly that that section there that makes any sense so you've got your your three ribs on the inside three nuggets where your um where your step bolts where your step screws down to and then you've actually got to that will at some point sit in there so I don't need to replace this bit I'm gonna hit it a bit more just to make sure that this actually seems I reckon that's salvageable. So my cunning plan, I've had the, the inner seal didn't really take much cutting. It fell off. So as you can see, we'll just cut it off clean across the bottom there. And that you can see there is the spot welded lip. So I'm gonna cut it at the back here somewhere where it's good, clean it off, drill the spot welds. Then I will probably section through here. That's a bit manky. I wanna come there, I reckon, or back here through into here and then same again we'll cut i'll cut put a cut through in here take this out and then i can lip i can joggle this weld it all in together clean it and spot weld it back on that should give me going to sadly have to pick this panel apart but it's not difficult um and then that section there um replaced and put in at the same time to fit in he said dropping everything again so that's the general idea as the two would go together in the vehicle um, so what we'll do is we'll get fitted on here like that we'll trim it in at both ends um, and I mean it can all be spot welded in as one with the outer sill um, which is here as well and then, um, but we'll get rid of all of this first. So basically we're spot welding three clean new pieces of metal on the outside. Um, that is the bottom joiner lip for where the outer sill will arch. So I don't know where I'll put that. That's just here. This is not actually the one I'm going to use because this is a, a two part one, but it gives you a general idea that that normally would sit there. So that's your outer sill. That joins to your inner sill. So, and gives you your main, basically your structure, so you can spot weld it all the way across the bottom down there, linked up, and then, and then this inner here um, would be this big panel sat there. Obviously, it's a fairly sizable chunk of truck, um, but there's no point bodgering it up. It'll only come back to haunt you. Um, it's going to have to be painted afterwards, and if we're going to keep it, and it's going to be a nice thing, um, we'll get it all seamed up, all welded in. I'm going to have to do something with this because I think it is so badly stretched. There's still half a ton of body filler on there. Um, so I will... I'm going to trim this out before I go home this evening and then tomorrow 
I really am waiting for the for the pole full wheel arch on the outside to turn up, but I can get this bit welded in, stitched in, and I can also get the inner seal put on and um, and ready to rock and roll. So we'll we'll sort of time lapse that, and we'll just keep video in chunks. <laughs> So, right, that's that bit out. Um, as you can see, I've just literally drilled as many of the spot wells. It's quite rusty, so it's really hard to see what you're supposed to be hitting. Um, cut across here. So I reckon that'll do me for the night. I'll clean that up tomorrow, and then I'll get that section de-seamed off of there. Um, and then we'll line it up in here and sort of cut it to fit from there to here. I might even go further back in there yet. I'm not 100% decided. And then once I've got sort of this somewhere, I can trim this into it. It was just a rough guide. Um, but it's, it must be seven o'clock now and um, the wife will stop talking to me if I don't go home at some point. Or I suppose if I don't go home at some point, she won't be able to not talk to me, but we're not thinking about that. Right, guys, have a nice night and I will be back again for another bit tomorrow. Right, so as I've got to order a load of panels this morning, I thought I wasn't going to try working on this till the evenings, but I've got an hour or so. I um, I decided the best bet was to probably strip the um, driver side of this dear old 310 out. I'm just going to have a go out now quickly. Should take me about 40 minutes. So if I show you where the bits that you're going to need to do, if you have to do the same same thing. Now these little um, plastic footwells are held in by three sunken screws hidden in these holes. They have little caps across the top of them to stop rubbish getting in there sadly this side they've um they've already gone missing but it makes it a bit more obvious so um if you're trying to get this plastic footwell liner out um, have a bit of a rub and a clean they are sometimes really hard to see um but this will give you a rough idea of the position of them and then normally the caps are in there 90% of the time the bolt heads have survived I think here um, it might get a bit interesting we'll try and blow them out and get them out so I've got to pull that out and then I can see what the condition of the, the actual inner step is underneath it and then after that we are over to we will quickly just to make my life easier and um, whip the door off which is dead easy so basically the door is and um, you can see the bolts are different colours so the top two top and bottom um, hold the mirror on and the two middle ones hold the door inch so you can get the door inch off past without taking the mirror off so best and easiest way i've found undo these two straight off here first put this and this will pop off if you want or you can leave it there um to one side two two bottom door inch um bolts straight out that one up here and then basically i can do it on my own you take the weight of the door um and if you've got a wacky uh, uh, battery impact gun I um, I just run them out like that and then literally you can fish the door off chuck it on the floor and then once you're free off the door and you can see them in there you're into the wing screws so one there there's another one hiding behind down in there and then you've got another one that's nigh on impossible to get to with the door on I mean you can do it but as you can see it's um it's not easy um, I found the best way of loosening these off. They are a big threaded screw. Um, so if you get a, a, screw, a thumpable screwdriver, big one, put it in there, hit the head of it a few times, softens them up a bit, and then normally they'll come out. Otherwise, if you go straight at it, um, you tend to find the head of the screw comes clean off, um, takes the edges off, and then you'll be there for hours trying to get it out. So, um, so that basically will pull that end off, um, depending on what you're doing. I mean, this one is hideously rusty, but tucked under here. I mean, you can see it is the, where is she? Bless, rust to there. It's another one of those screws that screws up into the inner wing. I think here we're probably going to end up cutting that off because um, she's knackered. Um, once the front bumper is off, you have this little bumper, hole side bumper holder here that um, this is the same Volkswagen 
and Mercedes that pops on and it goes through the bottom of the wing. So what you need to do is get in there with like a crow's, crow's foot or a daisy router and lever that back, pop it out, that back, pop it out. Watch, they are quite brittle. And then this whole unit will pop off and pull out. Um, there's another screw there, you can see the state of it, same sort of process. Try giving it a whack first, freeing it up a bit. And then, um, to remove the inner wing, Volkswagen is a very simple procedure. I'll take some for a bit of footage on a Volkswagen wing as well. So, um, all of these out. And then there is also just here is the, um, is the side light, um, or is the side repeater, sorry, um, wiring. So just pop that off and then you can take the final screw out on the bottom here. And basically that should, and I've got a lever in on here because Mercedes are, Sprinters aren't too bad, but the Volkswagens, strangely enough, are absolutely mastic to death in this group. They are an arse to get off if you're trying to repair a wing. I mean, I've taken to cutting through it with a, with a zip disc on an angle grinder first. Um, now, if you go in generation two Sprinter, so the facelift on this one, um, you'll have a big wing post that comes through, drops down here. Um, I will show you one later. That you need to remove another two bolts down here, or you can take the wing off on its own, but you've you've got some spot welds to drill out because um, they're actually welded to the post. If you're just taking it off purely to get in there, it's easier to take the post with it. Um, right, I'm going to do a bit more of my sort of favourite time lapse in pull this stuff out of this foot well, um, and then say so get these doors off. I'm also going to have this seat out because. Um, so as I said in the room, I'm sort of offends me. I've, it's got a good base and I've got the right back for it. Um, and then we'll pull all this round here and have a look at the seals, the inner seals and the bits. <laughs> in there same sort of rusty hair that's not too bad that I can repair um, foot well I mean it's not horrific but to be honest we've got holes in it at the front um, seal yeah I think um, I think after a bit of bashing at them that's at it so as I said I'd add a bit and we quickly whipped out the back um, obviously this is a dead LT35 but as you can see the three wing screws are pretty much same spot as the Mercedes Sprinter um, the LT does have one up in behind the uh, little plastic front mirror cover that's like gold dust to get so you're going to have to tease that off and I bet you can't get it out with the, breaking at least one of the tangs, but that's part of it. Then you just creep inside out. Same on the inside, three screws. So you need to take those out. Now the plastic bit is a similar ilk to the sprinter. So down in here are a load of these nasty little plastic things. You can unscrew those. And then this whole bumper slider, I mean, this one's broke. Pretty man key comes off. You've still got the same one screw under there on an LT, um, same 35 and 46. And then you have got one hiding in the back there that you need to fish out. And then basically, you're gonna have to get past. Let me see if I can spin the camera around a minute and I will show you what I mean. You're gonna have to get past the immense amount of goo that seals the inside of a in here. All this between the two seals is mastic on an LT35. So that is incredibly sticky and you're gonna have to cut through that otherwise when you start to pull the wing off you bend all the bottom of it all to hell. Um, let's see if we've got any better. So if you go, let's go over the other side of the yard and we'll go and find ourselves a facelift sprinter. This is facelift sprinter as you can see. 
the W Reg 2000 onwards up to 05. Um, as I said earlier, you've got a similar set of wing screws. The inner wings are slightly different on a facelift because they curl over the top. So you need to remove that one, that one, both of those. Now, there's a spot weld there, there and there, which links it to this big tower post. Now, if you're purely changing the wing for an aftermarket one, because um, he's rotted out down here where they all go, um, or been beat to death on the front like this one has, uh, you can leave this post in. But if you're just taking it off for access, or sometimes it's easier, there are two bolts, two 13 mil bolts hidden. You move the goo in there in the bottom. So one in the bottom of that post there. And then there's another one hidden at the bottom of this post. If you follow the post down, you'll have to scrape round it. They're 13, but they have got a load of mastic and gooch round them, sealant. And you've got the same as a, as a 904. There are a uh, little wing bolt at the bottom, obviously the same uh, bumper pickup. And then you're back to the same screws in here, apart from the fact that on the later sprinters, on the facelift, they aren't a, tech, uh, a Phillips screw, they're actually like a, a female female Torx bolt. Um, and so basically I tend to find going through and removing the door is the easiest one. Some of you might actually have the, uh, the posh options of electric windows, central lock-in, or and you'll have a rubber gator joiner between here and the back of the door. If you pop it off this end, pull the wiring, you'll normally find there's a, well, always find there's a joiner clip on here to allow you to disconnect the door from the wiring harness that's both LT 3546 to 3228 and um, all the sprinters all the way through right I'm going to go back inside and, um, and I'm well, I think we're back to 500 wiring harnesses today um, and the instructions okay, the wiring harness diagram came in Italian so that'll keep me amused for the afternoon won't it right so as part of the um, fixing of me where is she gone my dear old 310 which is uh, you can see buried right down the bottom down there all the seals and the wheel arches out part of this video um i've got to do repair some doors we're pretty much out of good doors i mean they are getting like gold dust now for sprinters of this age and for the volkswagens um they do repair panels as you can see and the one question i get asked all the time is can you put a sprinter door on a volkswagen lt one simple easy answer no, they are different. It will bolt on, but it won't look very good. And as far as I can remember, it makes a horrible mess when you try to open it. Um, so what I'm gonna do, um, before I start showing you how to repair a door, or not how we repair a door, let's put it that way, is show you the differences between all the doors and the reasons why you can't, um, what you can put on one sprinter to another sprinter, um, and then we'll get back to inner and out door skins. All right, right, I'm gonna turn the camera around and we'll have a look at these doors. In here, we have basically, let's run through it. This is a slab-nosed um, Mark 1 TM1 Sprinter door. Different door card, or not different door card, but obviously you can see that. So this door card is particular to the early Sprinters. Then, come one further forwards, this is the inside of a Volkswagen LT door. Now, Volkswagen LT doors are the same all the way through the range and all the way through the years so from the first one made this is mark two obviously because not mark one you could tell that so a mark two lt 35 46 28 32 door is exactly the same same door card without really any changes all the way through whereas the sprinter one if we go one up now this is facelift sprinter so this is 2000 to 2005 Whereas this is sort of 90, I think they did come out in 96. I had a P-Reg one, it's out in the yard. So 96 to 2000. Now sprinter wise, the actual doors for, for, for a 96 to a 2000, to a 2000 to 2005 are the same. The door cards are not. Um, they bolt on, so you can take this um, 904, five door card off and bolt it on that 904 door and vice versa and you can actually bolt a sprinter door card on an lt but what i'm going to do now is turn the, the these doors round and i'll show you the main difference as why you can't put a sprinter door 
on a Volkswagen LT. So the difference on this side um, is fairly obvious. You come down here and you look at the end of this 904 door, you will see he comes off the bottom there at a shallow angle, drops down. Yep. So off the end of the window, down it goes. Big swoop comes round through here, off down to the bottom. If you look at this, this is a 0506 LT door. You'll see that the LT door has got a bloody great lump comes out of here, and then the swoop is much wider. It's out here. It goes right up. When you stand back and look at them, you'd be amazed what's different. So, in theory, the inner frame is pretty much the same. But, quarter lights, as far as I know, are different because the LT one's squared off at the bottom, the Sprinter one goes uphill. The window glasses do fit one to the other, apart from the LT one is shorter. I also want to might well, some talking doors. I get asked this question all the time. Is the wing mirror from a Sprinter to an LT the same? It is to look at, but they are actually different. And there's only one way you'll find this out. So, there's a plastic locating lug. The one, two, three bolt holes are the same, but there's a hooking lug that keeps this top plastic piece in. Now, if you look at the, the distance from the hooking lug hole from the edge there, this is an LT door. If we go in over here, I'll be a bit, a bit, make it look a bit smarter. That's the sprinter locating lug at the top. Now the sprinter locating lug is about, it's not much, eight, six, eight mil further down than the LT one. So when you go to fit your wing mirror on your uh, sprinter or, well, on your LT from a sprinter or your sprinter for an LT, you'll find that this bit Instead of sitting, I mean, this one's not a particularly prime example. There's the locating lug in there, look. And instead of sitting nice and primely in that hole and locking in, which it should do, it won't fit and it will sit out like that. So, just another point to remember. Right, so what I'm now doing, um, I'm going to mark out this door. What I tend to do, well, I have a feeling these panels were probably designed originally as a cover. Um, I don't, sorry, I was explaining, but I don't like using panels as a cover is to just gingerly fit this over the remnants of the old one. So obviously, I mean, at the moment, he's too far down. He's in the wrong, not totally the wrong place. And then all I do is mark a line with a permanent marker down here to give me a rough idea of where I need to cut. So I need to cut, obviously, below this line. So what I'm going to do now, whip that off out of the way, back to me door. So I will run a zip disc and an angle grinder blade basically through the bottom of here. So just a first cut. Um, you've got to cut through on the corners here. Now do remember when chopping it off that if you go <coughs> cut quite straight through, quite deep all the way through here, if you cut really deep through on the end, you're just going to chop through this bit. So gently on the outside edges for about that, just cut through the surface until you see you've gone through one and don't cut through the other because you'll only have to weld it back up again and do that both sides because obviously you've got a lip like this both sides. Now these panels are actually masted or, or panel adhesive glued on to the two. So this is glued here. The right one for that one? No it's not. Let's go and get the right one. This one. So what they actually do is glue the two, like so. So put a bead of silicon and sealant in it. Anyway, so back to it. So yes, as we say, these two are glued together. And um, what you're going to need to try and do is get them unglued. Very occasionally there are a couple of tack welds which you can grind off. But say, cut through here, or cut lower than you think you're going to need, because um, what they say, cut once, measure twice, and so if you've chopped off more than you need, or if you've chopped off more than you needed, you've got a problem. If you've got a bit of overhang, you'll be all right. Um, what I've tended to do, there's sort of two choices. One is to attack it with an oxyacetylene torch, round here, warm it up and melt the glue, and then try and bend 
this wrap over section that's been folded down in the factory quite a big machine off of here now that sort of works it's not the best and it is a bit noxious so what I've actually found to be a better bet is get untangled a minute a good old flap disc so I'll start in a minute it's to whiz with a flap disc you could do it with a with a with a um, grinding disc they're just that bit more aggressive with these I find a bit more controllable is to zoom down through and take you only really need to do it on that side and that side once you've cut through we'll do it in a minute is to zoom down through and cut through the bend over the, the fold over so just literally whip the edge of it off and then you'll be left with the um, with this bit stuck on the back side which you can sort of then gingerly scrape off and this section free so then once you've cut through here you can lever this up gingerly and then pick the bottom off so as i say i'm going to stick it on time lapse and start chucking sparks around um, wearing obviously the appropriate ppe gear now a million people will tell me off for the uh, standard workshop spec non-guarded angle grinder yes they are dangerous it's not the best of ideas but you will find doing what we do all the time you can't get the big guard in 90 percent of the places you need to now perfect you try and get this up in the inner wheel arch of one of those with a guard on with a guard on it you will not do it so what we've taken to doing it gives you a bit of thing is if you're in somewhere dangerous, big effing leather gloves. Always remember the pair of goggles. I know they're a pain in the arse, but I think I've been to casualty about five times and had bits of metal picked out of my eyes, and I have grown up and stopped being an idiot because you only get one set. And, um, and as Dom that works for me currently injured himself last week by sticking one of those zip discs straight in the top of his middle finger down through there, um, sadly, because he wasn't wearing a pair of gloves, um, You've got to be dead careful. Anyway, I'm just going to not lecture anyone because you all know as well as I do. I, um, I'm going to stick this on time lapse and I am going to get Aki lumps off this door before the day expires. Right, so, what I've done, obviously, cut through it now. The top of the pan join panel comes to here so i've left myself enough to joggle cut move to make the two join and then if you look here <coughs> i've basically flat disked clean through the panel join on the end so in theory so you get on this and then the same here the thing pretty much ready to come off now i only lightly scuffed along the bottom i might go back and do that again because unbelievably this one is actually fairly well stuck i mean you can really feel that pulling and because i want to try and save this flitch because it's only this corner that's bad um i'm going to quickly go back whiz along there with a with an angle grinder and a, and a flap disc again so that's kind of, and then the thing will come off clean we turn it over and then we see what we've got So quick whiz along the bottom, didn't actually end up through the flap disc, no, just about through. Basically, that was enough to warm it up, funnily enough, to pretty much melt the adhesive. You can see what I mean, there's a bead of silicon, or not a silicon, there's a bead of body sealant along here, and on these, in the middle, I think there's one little sort of, I don't think it's quite a spot weld, it's more like a little tack weld, um, which quite cheerfully, which is actually, it is a spot weld. So one little spot weld in the middle. Then we get left with this. Let me just get my airline and we'll lump. Um... Basically, there we go. So that's the bottom lip. And you can see this one really has only gone in the corner. Now it's easier for me to repair this than it is to fit the whole. I don't think I've got that repair section out, but the whole of one of these repair sections, that's not quite technically the right one, that's the other side, but you can see what I mean. So that goes in, if you bottom your doors completely, you're gonna have to measure one of these up. I'll, um, I'm gonna do a passenger's door next, and this is actually a passenger's door panel. I don't need the driver's door ones. They're in the, in the stock pile in the, um, in the tea room. 
So, um, so yeah, so what we'll do in a minute, we'll roll this door open over, clean the inner edges off, see what we've got left. And, um, and then I'll basically get making up some, um, making up a, a little repair panel to weld in here, um, which shouldn't be difficult. And, um, and then obviously on to replacing this door skin. I mean, the last bit, well, we all know how these doors roll, but I mean this, apart from where the water gets in, see there on the corner and it all, because it catches in here. Now what lots of people don't know, is that these vans, both LT and Sprinter, have drain holes in the bottom corners of the doors. And you can see, basically, I reckon the reason this one is gone is because that drain hole was probably gacked up full of cack. It started, the water starts to get in between the body seam and, and, and the panel, and then that's what you end up with, because it's always in the same place. It's always along the bottom. And I mean, there must be a degree, no matter how much of water that actually gets past this rubber down the inside of the door. And, obviously in condensation and other stuff. Anyway, I'll stop babbling on. Um, I'm gonna turn this door over, tidy it up. And... See, we're all cleaned up, ground down. Um, that bit's the bit that I've got to make. Um, cleaned across here. Um, this door has got a little pickly bit there, but to be honest, it's pretty solid. Um, under here, as you can see, all the um, all the seam sealant is cleaned off because you do end up with a bead of that left. Um, and so, same through there. So I am going to go and get patch make. There's some stuff to get some patch making, um, and then we'll. I think probably the best way is to put this panel quickly clamped or clear out on here. And um, and then I will cut this into suit. Because um, obviously, something like that. One thing you do have to remember, um, take your measurements, because you need to get this gap right. Because if you put it on like that, one end wide and the other, it will look poo. Measure it up probably before you cut it off. Um, and it's not right for me because oh, I'll just go and measure one of the 20 we've got kicking around here. Um, but probably worth remembering that because you are going to have to, I will joggle these into the other. Joggling basically means we'll mark this against this other panel. And um, I've got a tool or it's an overall juggling tool that basically puts a step in the steel so you can slide one sheet under the other. You can't do it here, obviously, because you're going to be proud. Um, and then you've got to be sort of quite careful about how you go about welding this. I prefer putting this join here because um, it's easier to lose. If you put it, there's quite a complex curve with a line on the side of a sprinter or an LT. And you always see it when someone's filled the bottom of a door. You can tell a mile off on the side of a truck because you can't see that slightly shadowed line there. You lose that. Um, so, I mean, like this door, I could have cut it there and tried to join it, but then I'm gonna lose that there. Here I can double up the steel and also I can fill, if I have to, for the final finish, this groove, um, rub it out flat, and to be honest, to the naked eye, or to, to you aren't gonna see it. Um, I mean, you will get a bit, we do tend to struggle with these panels because they're a bit more of an over, of a cover, is you get a slight lip here and here, but you can tuck them in and, and they look pretty reasonable. I mean, let's be honest, at the end of the day, we are talking 20 year old van doors, but might as well try and do a nice job of it. Um, I'm gonna turn this off for a minute. I'm gonna go and find some stuff and I will make a patch up. And once I've got that sort of made up, I'll come back, stitch it in, and then we'll go on from there. Right, so um, 
hat installed. Uh, as we can see, uh, I mean, she's not gonna make the most beautiful, admittedly, this piece is pretty good, but it could do with a bit more. If it was on the outside of a vehicle, it is on the bottom, on the inside of a door. So if I just quickly flip this thing over a minute, and then as you can see, we are all well didn't we? So we'll tidy that right up. Um, the eagle eye of both of you will pick, that obviously because the drain hole was here, um, the current it isn't. I'm going to tap this in and round, knock it down a bit, and I will cut a hole in there so that the, um, so the moisture can get out. Um, I think the next bit will be to pin the outer panel on it, cut the top, and then we'll get sealing it all. Well, sealing it up first before I put the outer panel on, and then sealing it all together. So what we've done now, or what I've done now, so we, um, look here, I have cut, oh, that's how I do it. Two little slits down into the edge of the panel here, yep. Yeah. One one side, one the other, following the line of this. Now, basically, you can get it so that that section rides under. So, there, tap him up. And then basically, check here. Mm, not bad. Check your measurements. That's a little bit narrow there. And then, because obviously you don't want to rise here, you don't want this lump. And we'll try and join the two together. So basically I've marked through here, I've actually used, oh, I do use, I've used a bit I cut off. So if we line the bit I cut off up here, and then obviously you've got to equate for a lump of zip disc in between the two. Um, and pushing that in the right place. But I reckon sort of there, little line chopped, cut through there. Same again here. I'm going to whip that bit off the top and then that should lie that flat down. It's going to have to be butt welded uh, and ground back. And then this I will mark now and then I'm going to joggle this entire line to put a put a dip in it and to allow it to sit up under the other one. And what I will probably do, um, just to put them together really nicely, is to drill some little holes in there and I'll, um, I'll use some sort of temporary clecos to pull it together because I can always weld the holes up afterwards. Um, I am going to mark it up and run a line through it, mark it up and cut the sides off now. I'll go back on time lapse and then once that's cut, we'll show you how to joggle the panel. I mean, there are some cheap, simple, simple joggling tools. And you tuck it all in together, um, you'll see what I mean, and we'll keep going.
are now. Um, I've joggled an edge all the way along here. I mean, admittedly, what I should have done, it won't matter for this one, but um, this panel card it originally isn't terribly straight. Um, it's fine, I've managed to follow it. I can pin it back down, weld it in. Um, we'll we'll uh, remember to um, mark it out with a straight edge next time. Now, just to show people, if you don't know what a joggler is, um, this is an airline joggler. I mean, they're not particularly expensive things. And what it actually does is put a step in a piece of steel, a piece of my a wild flat steel. So if I just push this here a bit of scrap, so at the moment, like that, and just go and pull the trigger. So that give you a rough idea, it gives you, where is the camera? It gives you a juggled edge. So basically, you can go one under the other. So what we've got here is that, like that, tucked under there. So basically the two end up, where you end up with a trough and they're squidged together. So we're measured up here. Well, I've just done it with a, with a crappy old caliper. So she's got a caliper slide bolts is there. And um, basically, um, I'm going to take it back off again and paint up the inside before I stick this piece down properly. And I'm going to have to run a bead of, um, of body sealant all the way round if I take this off. Now this, which you know I won't do that around this edge. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to use what we call as, I know them as Clecos. I'm sure someone will probably tell me I'm wrong or I'm right. So, um, I just won't see that. So, we'll put a run of these one pull rivets in here so you can take them in and out, um, pull the two panels together, tack it up, um, take these out because they're obviously nice and reusable. They've got hell of a pull on them. They'll pull the two together because you can't get in there to pull them together, obviously, because you can't get to the back of the door um, or the back of the panel. And, um, and then, once it's tack welded, we'll, um, we'll get sort of make sure it's all tapped down nicely. And, um, and then we need to weld it very, very carefully in small sections. Otherwise, it will curl up like a good one. If you start over there with your MIG welder and go in one it down to the end there, you'll end up with something that looks like a lump of the Atlantic Ocean. So you have to do it, but we'll show you bits of that. I'm no master welder and I'm no master panel beater, so please don't beat me up for this. I, um, I can do this job. Um, I'm sure there is a man in the world that can do it perfectly and better than I can, um, but he's probably fixing Ferraris and, and not 15-year-old Vandals. So, what I've done now, obviously, we've um, sort of zinc galvanised, sprayed the inside of the door, um, hold it off for a few more years, um, and it goes off relatively quickly, and then run a big line of, like, sort of body grab adhesive, basically. I mean, that's what you could probably call it. All the way around the bottom, um, and what I'm going to do now is take my nicely cut in panel, or, well, cut him panel, slot him in, drop him down, and then go along, take my little removable rivet.
So that's all clamped down. It's got um, I say panel panel bond behind it. We'll throw that over there before it goes completely dog on. And tap the edges in. And I am going to leave that. I mean, it is five o'clock now. I'm going to leave that overnight um, for the panel adhesive to go off. And then tomorrow, I will. I will come back to it. I'm going to have to knock these edges over without beating the hell out of this bit. Um, you normally have to sort of slightly trim them in the corners, tap them down. Um, tap this edge in a little bit because I say he's slightly proud and you can see we can knock that back in a bit. Um, and that's, well, two thirds or half the effort it takes to repair a Volkswagen or a Mercedes Sprinter door. The one thing I will say, um, every time I try and sell immaculate, lovely, coloured, not beat to death ones of these for 250 quid. Everyone tells me, moans, tells me they're far too expensive. Rah, 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 rah. It's a prime example. These panels, by the time, so an inner and an outer, if you have to put it in, I think the panels run at somewhere between 60 and 70 quid for the two of them, plus the postage. Now, I mean, obviously you've been following this. I've been even talking. I don't think I could do this any quicker than about two and a half hours. Um, to get it to sort of this state and then maybe another hour to seam it up, weld it um, and then tap the corners around and um, run a bead of sealant around the outside. So we're a fairly standard garage, so it's £55 an hour to weld, um, that's what we charge. So you've done 220 quid just in labour. You've got another 70 75 by the time you've paid the postage worth of panels and you still haven't got a primed, painted, and lovely in colour looking door. So, if your nice LT Bespready Sprinter Breaker Man offers you a door for 250 quid in colour that's not rusty and as lovely and you don't have to do anything to, tear his arm off, because they're a gift. You only get to a van if you get lucky, two good ones. Vans are really expensive, um, and most of them that end up being broken for spares, I have crap doors. So um, you can sort of see where I'm coming from. Anyway, I'm going to leave this for tonight. Um, I will be back again tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon by the time I get back to this. Um, and I'll do a little bit more on it, tapping it together. And then I'll probably add this to the video for the removal of the seals off the other van and then stick it up on Friday night. Because otherwise, I think by the time I've tried to do another sprinter door, um, you're all going to have been so bored, silly, but you get the idea of where I'm coming from. So what I'll do is I'll do this as a part one on the dear old 310 over here. Um, and this is part of it. And then as part of part two, um, I should have had my wheel arches and the rest of my parts turned up for um, dear old Doris over here. If you haven't, uh, well, you would have seen it earlier. Um, so we'll get welding those in as part of the next one. Um, cutting the other side out, most likely. And, um, and then what I will do is I'll do another little end piece, pulling this door apart and then actually putting an inner and an outer in so that you get a rough idea of how to fit the inner. Um, but as you can see, it's an awfully large amount of work and that door still needs an hour and a half's worth of filler in after we've welded it up um, to make sure that little runs nice and flat because no matter how hard you try, you do get a bit of a lip here. It's all got to be ground out, tap flat. And then it's got to be painted um, to whatever colour for us. It'll have to go Mercedes Arctic white. Um, anyway, I'm going to sign off here. And I say I will probably just put this video together as one. You can watch this one and then we'll do the, the, the other half of it. It might even take three, three goes because there is quite a lot to do to that. Right, guys. Nice one. Back here again in the morning. Um, I've had it clamped up all overnight, so this seam seal initially hasn't stuck the best, but it will do over time. Um, so what we've got to do now is we just basically, I suppose swedge would be the right word, it's not the edges over. Um, I find large long steel underneath. Panel hammer, which someone's been using for eating stuff again, but it, but it won't hurt for this. Um, and you, what you've got to try and do is literally fold this lip over. Now he's all sealed and glued in here, as you can see. 
Um, I've done this one. I mean, they never quite run as perfect as the original because obviously that's done with a big shiny machine in the Mercedes factory. That's done by Al in a shed with a hammer. But if you get it well enough, I mean, you can tap this edge up afterwards. Try not to beat too much of the hell out of it, obviously, because you can dent it on the other side. But if you hold a decent size sort of steel weight against it, and a dolly, I can't remember what this was, but I mean, it's, it's, it's been tappy tappy brushy for years. Um, so what I'll do, I'm going to go back and I'll finish this lip off. We'll spin her over and have a look at the other side. So that's that tapped in all around the edges here, as you can see, it's not bad. Um, all the way along the bottom and then this side. Um, I'm gonna get on now and it'll take me a while. I'm gonna very slowly weld this up, grind it back. And then what I'll do once I've finally done that, ground it, cleaned it, I'll, um, I'll show you the sort of finished article. Um, and then basically she can sort of sit here until we're ready. We'll have to fill this line. Really, I mean, you could spend hours trying to grind it back. I'll see how good I can get it. Um, but obviously, you've got a clean panel there, the original clean panel there. Um, you've kept your shut line along here. I mean, that join there is pretty good. Um, nice corners on it. I mean, you're bound to get a few little marks here, but that's just part of it. I must just say, I'm not a panel beater. Um, and then we're, we're nice and tucked in here. So by the time I've silicon the, well, silicon the body sealed the bottom of this up, and then it's been painted. I think that will make quite a nice door. Right, so after welded line, ground back. Um, admittedly, you could make it a lot more beautiful by welding it, grinding it, welding it, grinding it, welding it, grinding it, it's joined. Um, and I will, it's covered in galvanized uh, spray, we'll let it go off, and I will just run a skimmer feather in there. I and mean, if you really, really add the time, you could spend hours welding it again, grinding it again, welding it again, and you can get it flush. But at the end of the day, um, this is a, a work truck. That'll hold together perfectly, and, um, and let's be honest, it's not bad. Um, so it's all, all around the bottom, all this is done. Um, one thing I will advise people, I am, um, the main problem with these doors, let me pause this and I'll be back in a sec. So we're all welded on that. I mean, as you can see down in there, you end up with a, with a joint. Um, now there's not really a lot I can do. I'm, I will quickly stick the nib sander in there and just clean it and grind it off a bit, make it a bit more pleasant. Not that you're ever gonna see it. Um, so the doors all seamed up. What I have taken to doing, and I'm in no way affiliated with these guys, but this stuff is brilliant. So this is from a little company called Lanoguard. Um, it's like a, a, a waxing oil. It's made out of sheep's lanolin. Um, it's really thin and the stuff is brilliant. I mean, um, if you go and have a Google, um, you'll find them. It's not the world's cheapest of things. And it does smell like a sweaty sheep on an August summer's day. But, rust-wise, for stuff like this. So yeah, you get a Lanagard applicator, which is like a, a squidgy thing, and I've taken to literally thinning. I mean, it's a very sort of light oil, as you can I squirt it on there, as you can see, it will run. Um, and the trouble with wax, I mean, wax oil's all right, but you struggle to get it in there, and this stuff is brilliant. So if you just goof the entire side inside of your door, now it does currently smell very much of sweaty sheep round here, but the stuff's steam cleaner proof. Um, and I mean, we've been doshing it on stuff for about a year now, um, and it would come highly recommended by me, especially for sort of doing the underside of your van. As, as we know, the problem with rust proofing is you'll never get all the cack out of the, out of the joints, you'll never get all the mud off. Um, now, the nice thing with this Lano Guard stuff is because it's quite a thin oil, um, and after a period of time, it does set. If you do, you're doing stuff like this, where you know that seal, if he was solid, let's say, is going to have a degree of loose rust and dirt at the bottom of it, which you will not be able to get out. Now, if you put 
we're not going to say whack, but a, a thick sort of wax oil type product in there. What you end up doing is the wax sitting on top of the, um, of the mud and the dirt that's in there. And generally, it'll make it 10 times worse. And what you're actually doing is creating like a little sealed in rot box where as this Lano Guard stuff, because it's not nice and thin, um, and we've done this quite a few times, and then sort of soaked it, cut things open, actually soaks into mud, dirt, and rust, really light rust, really well. So it actually impregnates the dirt and turns it into a load of oily sheep stuff, and then it doesn't rust. So um, I, um, I will leave this video here now. I'm going to do and the passenger's door over the weekend. Um, I'm going to put this up. It's Thursday now, so I put this up Friday. Um, because basically, as I say, I reckon it's going to get far too long. So that's the driver's door done. Um, next week, I will go back to some more seal fitting and repairs because we're still waiting on the last few panels. And then also, we'll do an inner and outer on, um, on, on, on this door. So if you want to sort of subscribe to me, little channel, um, keep an eye. And I say, we do do a lot of Volkswagen LT Sprinter stuff, so it should be relatively interesting. Um, and, um, and just say, just give us a thumbs up and, um, and subscribe. would be much appreciated. Thank you very much, guys, and um, we shall see you later.